The cardinal, who had been French ambassador to Vienna a few years earlier, had fallen foul of Marie Antoinette's mother, the Empress Marie Theresa, and wanted nothing more than to win back royal approval. La Motte saw her chance. She discovered that the jewellers Charles Auguste Beaumer and Paul Brassange were trying to sell off an extraordinarily expensive necklace that had originally been designed for Madame du Barry, the mistress of the former King Louis the Fifteenth. The necklace was worth an estimated two million livres, roughly fifteen million dollars today. At the death of the king, the necklace was unpaid for, and the jewellers were facing bankruptcy. They had already tried to sell it to the current king, Louis the Sixteenth, but the queen refused, saying, We have more need of seventy-four ships than of necklaces. La Motte, an inveterate con artist, persuaded the cardinal that she enjoyed the queen's secret favour. On hearing of this, Rohan resolved to use her to regain the queen's goodwill. La Motte encouraged the cardinal to begin writing to the queen, and claimed to pass on the letters to her. In reality, and along with her other lover, Viette, a forger, she created her own replies from the queen. In these fake letters, the queen spoke of her desire for the necklace, but aware of the reluctance of the king to buy it due to the current dire financial situation of the country, she hoped that the cardinal could lend her the money as a secret favor. The cardinal believed these letters to be authentic and agreed to buy the necklace for the queen. A late-night secret liaison was arranged in the garden of the Palace of Versailles, where the cardinal was to meet the queen. In reality, La Motte sent a prostitute who resembled the queen, called Nicole Le Guay d'Oliva, who assured him of her forgiveness. Now completely convinced of his close relationship with the queen, the cardinal contacted the jewellers, agreeing to pay for the necklace in installments. The jewellers were told to give the necklace to Lamotte, who passed it on to her husband, who immediately began selling off the individual diamonds in London. The swindle was finally uncovered when the cardinal did not make his first instalment and was unable to produce the necklace. The jewellers complained to the queen, who revealed her ignorance of the entire affair. The cardinal was arrested along with Lamotte, the forger, Villette, the prostitute, Doliva, and Count Cagliostro, one of the cardinal's clients, whom La Motte accused of having orchestrated the entire con. The cardinal was acquitted and exiled to one of his own properties in southern France. Reto de Villette was found guilty of forgery and exiled. Nicole de Liva was acquitted. Count Cagliostro, so acquitted, was exiled from France by orders of the king. Jean de La Motte the adventurous at the heart of the story was found guilty and sentenced to be whipped, branded, and imprisoned for life in the Salpetriere, a notorious prison for prostitutes. However, she managed to escape disguised as a boy and made her way to London, where, in 1789, she published her memoirs. Unsurprisingly, she blamed Marie Antoinette for the whole affair. Louis the Sixteenth and Marie Antoinette, although completely unaware of the scam, had decided to publicly prosecute to defend their honor. Unfortunately, this had the opposite effect, destroying the reputation of the queen, whom many believed had manipulated La Motte to wreak revenge on her enemy, the cardinal. The affair entirely discredited the Bourbon monarchy in the eyes of the people, and the queen's reputation would never recover from the incident. Only a few years later, she would face the guillotine, the dying symbol of the corruption of the ancient regime.